Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Everything I hear him saying is truth. I know it. The truth in his word literally comes from the Bible. The more you watch it, the more you realize it is the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach through a series that I've entitled, The True Nature of God. This is an old teaching, something that God showed me about 40 years ago, one of the first books that I wrote on this. But this is so foundational. If you don't understand the true nature and character of God, it's impossible to have a really positive relationship. Plus, it makes you susceptible to all of Satan's lies and misrepresentations about God. And my staff put together this little introduction. They just uh, basically summarized some of the things in this teaching. This is a total free offer to you. The other things we're asking for a suggested donation. Uh, we don't dictate it, but we ask for it. And, there, and then we have CDs and DVDs on this. And I encourage you to please get this material. You know, in a little 30-minute segment, it's impossible for me to say everything that I need to say. So I'm having to break it up and sometimes I leave things without an explanation that I would typically give. And these materials will go into a lot better detail. And I encourage you, before you reject some of these things, is to study it out and check these things out. So I've been sharing a lot of things, but basically that the Old Testament law was not inaccurate, but it was incomplete and it gave a wrong impression of God. The Old Testament law only showed the holiness and the justice of God. It didn't really reveal the mercy of God. Now, it did in a sense through the sacrifices. They were symbolic of Jesus. And so there was mercy and there was grace uh, woven into the Old Testament. But as a general rule, the Old Testament law was a strict standard and if you missed it, you got punished, you got judged unless you offered the appropriate sacrifice. Under the New Covenant, we now have a more complete revelation that God never wanted to punish us for our sins. But His holiness and His justice demands it. He would be unjust. God would be unjust if He let sin go without punishment. And so He did punish sin, but instead of doing it to us personally, he punished Jesus for us. Jesus took our whipping. Jesus took our punishment so that we could have all of the goodness of God that would have been available to us if we'd have been able to live holy. Man, there, there's a difference. The Old Testament law just shows you the wrath, the justice, the holiness of God. The New Covenant grace shows you the mercy and the goodness. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ is what it says in John chapter 1. So I've been going through the book of Hebrews and uh, sharing a lot of things. In chapter 9, it says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. And so it begins to list some of the things that were in the tabernacle. And I dealt with this yesterday, but in Hebrews chapter 8, it says that God showed Moses the temple in heaven. And when he came down and built the tabernacle, he built it according to the pattern that he had seen in heaven. There is actually a temple in heaven and the Old Testament tabernacle typified it. And so here's some of the pieces that were in that tabernacle. It says there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is also called the sanctuary. You know, each one of these pieces that are in the tabernacle is very significant. Just for time's sake, I'm not going to teach on this, but every one of these pieces of uh, furniture that was in the tabernacle had a purpose, and it reflected something about our relationship with God. In verse 3, it says, After the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. I'm aware that many of you may not know some of these things that it's talking about, but every one of these things is very significant. And in verse 5, it says, And over it, this is talking about over the Ark of the Covenant and this mercy seat, 
THERE ARE OLD TESTAMENT SCRIPTURES THAT SAYS THAT GOD WOULD MEET MOSES ON THE MERCY SEAT AND COMMUNE WITH HIM THERE. AND uh, THIS ARK OF THE COVENANT SYMBOLIZED THE PRESENCE AND THE HOLINESS OF GOD. IF ANYBODY TOUCHED THE ARK OF THE COVENANT AND IT WASN'T DONE IN A PROPER WAY, uh, THEY WERE KILLED. MATTER OF FACT, uh, IT GOES AND TALKS ABOUT THIS VEIL THAT SEPARATED THE HOLY PLACE WHERE WAS THE SHOWBREAD AND THE, and the uh, ALTAR OF INCENSE AND THE CANDLESTICK AND THINGS. THE PRIEST COULD ENTER IN THERE EVERY SINGLE DAY. BUT THEN THERE WAS A VEIL THAT SEPARATED THAT PLACE WHERE THE PRIEST WENT EVERY DAY, THE HOLY PLACE, FROM THE HOLY OF HOLIES, AND THAT'S WHERE THE ARK OF THE COVENANT WAS, AND THAT'S WHERE GOD'S PRESENCE DWELT. AND THIS VEIL WAS JUST AMAZING. IT SHOWED THAT AS LONG AS THE VEIL WAS was THERE, IT SHOWED THAT THE WAY TO GOD WASN'T COMPLETELY MANIFEST YET. THERE WAS A SEPARATION FROM uh, GOD uh, BECAUSE OF OUR SIN, AND THAT'S WHAT THE VEIL SEPARATED. BUT JESUS BECAME SIN FOR US WHO KNEW NO SIN, 2 CORINTHIANS 5, 21. AND WHEN HE DIED, THE VEIL OF THE TEMPLE WAS RENT INTO FROM THE TOP TO THE BOTTOM. THAT'S BECAUSE HE BECAME SIN. AND HE, WHEN HIS BODY WAS BROKEN, THAT SEPARATION BETWEEN GOD AND MAN WAS GONE. AND SO LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 5. IT SAYS, AND OVER IT, TALKING ABOUT OVER THIS ARK OF THE COVENANT, INSIDE THE HOLY OF HOLIES, THERE WERE CHERUBIMS OF GLORY SHADOWING THE MERCY SEAT OF WHICH WE CANNOT NOW SPEAK PARTICULARLY. THIS IS REALLY IMPORTANT, THAT FIFTH VERSE. YOU KNOW WHY YOU CAN'T SPEAK ABOUT THE CHERUBIMS OF GLORY? THAT SHADOWED THE MERCY SEAT, AND YOU CAN'T TALK ABOUT THAT NOW. EVERYTHING ELSE, HE DIDN'T SAY THIS ABOUT THE OTHER THINGS. THERE IS STILL A REPRESENTATION OF SOMETHING THAT'S INVOLVED IN OUR RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, BUT WHEN IT COMES TO THE CHERUBIMS THAT WERE OVER THE MERCY SEAT, WE CAN'T TALK ABOUT THEM NOW. WHY NOT? BECAUSE CHERUBIMS WERE WARRIOR ANGELS. YOU CAN SEE IN THE THIRD CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF GENESIS THAT WHEN GOD DROVE MAN OUT OF THE GARDEN, HE PUT TWO CHERUBIMS THERE THAT HAD FLAMING SWORDS THAT TURNED EVERY WAY TO PROTECT THE TREE OF LIFE SO THAT MAN WOULD NOT ENTER BACK IN AND EAT OF IT AND LIVE FOREVER. CHERUBIMS AREN'T JUST FAT LITTLE BABIES THE WAY THAT THEY'VE BEEN DEPICTED BY SOME PEOPLE. THEY ARE WARRIOR ANGELS. EZEKIEL CHAPTER 1, EZEKIEL CHAPTER 10 TALKS ABOUT THE CHERUBIMS. AND THE PURPOSE OF THE CHERUBIMS IN THE HOLY OF HOLIES WAS TO PROTECT THE PRESENCE OF GOD FROM ANYBODY ENTERING INTO THAT PLACE WHO HAD NOT BEEN TOTALLY CLEANSED. MATTER OF FACT, IN THE OLD COVENANT, ONLY THE PRIEST COULD in ENTER INTO THE HOLY OF HOLIES ONE DAY A YEAR ON THE DAY OF ATONEMENT. THIS WAS, YOU KNOW, THERE WERE SACRIFICES MADE FOR SINS EVERY SINGLE DAY OUTSIDE OF THE TABERNACLE, AND uh, THEY WOULD MAKE THESE SACRIFICES EVERY MORNING AND EVENING. PEOPLE WOULD COME AND OFFER SACRIFICES, AND THERE WAS JUST A CONSTANT FLOW OF BLOOD IN THE OLD COVENANT WHERE PEOPLE WERE MAKING SACRIFICES. BUT ON THE DAY OF ATONEMENT, THE HIGH PRIEST WOULD MAKE A SPECIAL SACRIFICE, AND HE WOULD GO PAST THIS VEIL AND ENTER RIGHT IN TO THE HOLY OF HOLIES AND PUT THAT BLOOD OF THE SACRIFICE ON THE uh, MERCY SEAT. BUT IT COULD ONLY BE DONE ONE DAY A YEAR, AND HE HAD TO GO THROUGH A SPECIAL CLEANSING, AND IF HE DID IT INCORRECTLY, HE WOULD BE STRUCK DEAD. AND ACCORDING TO JOSEPHUS, WHO WAS A FIRST CENTURY HISTORIAN THAT THE ROMANS USED TO WRITE A HISTORY OF THE JEWS, JOSEPHUS WROTE THAT THE uh, HIGH PRIEST ACTUALLY PUT A ROPE AROUND HIS FOOT AND LET IT DANGLE OUT INTO THE HOLY PLACE BECAUSE IF HE WENT INTO THE HOLY OF HOLIES AND IF HE HADN'T PURGED HIMSELF AND DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT, HE WOULD BE STRUCK DEAD BY THESE CHERUBIMS. YOU KNOW, IN THE HOLY OF HOLIES, IN SOLOMON'S TEMPLE, THESE CHERUBIMS WERE HUGE. THEY STRETCHED, I THINK IT WAS 60 FEET. THEY HAD THESE HUGE WINGS AND THEY TOUCHED EACH WALL AND THEN THEY TOUCHED EACH OTHER IN THE MIDDLE. AND THE PURPOSE OF IT WAS THAT IF YOU ENTERED IN, AND IF YOU WEREN'T TOTALLY CLEANSED AND STUFF, YOU WOULD BE STRUCK DEAD BECAUSE YOUR UNHOLY FLESH COULD NOT DWELL IN THE PRESENCE OF OUR HOLY GOD. YOU KNOW, I BELIEVE THIS IS THE REASON THAT THE BIBLE SAYS IN A NUMBER OF PLACES THAT NO MAN CAN SEE GOD AND LIVE. IT'S NOT BECAUSE GOD'S SO TICKED OFF THAT IF YOU CATCH A GLIMPSE OF HIM, HE'S GOING TO KILL YOU. IT'S JUST THAT GOD IS SO HOLY 
HE IS SO AWESOME THAT OUR BODIES WOULD EXPLODE. YOU CAN'T HANDLE THE PRESENCE OF GOD. THESE CHERUBIMS WERE THERE TO JUST CONSTANTLY BE A REMINDER THAT YOU BETTER BE CLEAN WHEN YOU COME INTO THE PRESENCE OF GOD. AND THAT'S THE REASON THAT WE CAN'T TALK OF THEM SPECIFICALLY NOW. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS HERE IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 9, VERSE 5. THE REASON WE CAN'T TALK ABOUT THEM NOW IS BECAUSE THE VEIL HAS BEEN RENT IN TWO, AND NOW YOU CAN COME BOLDLY BEFORE THE THRONE OF GRACE TO OBTAIN MERCY AND FIND GRACE TO HELP IN THE TIME OF NEED, HEBREWS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 16, BECAUSE JESUS BECAME SIN FOR US. HE SATISFIED THE WRATH OF GOD. GOD'S PUNISHMENT IS NO LONGER ON YOU. SIN HAS BEEN TAKEN OUT OF THE WAY, AND YOU CAN COME RIGHT INTO THE VERY HOLY OF HOLIES NOW. LET ME JUST JUMP AHEAD. I'M GOING TO COME BACK AND READ THIS IN MORE DETAIL, BUT LET ME READ THIS IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 10. IT SAYS THAT WE NOW COME UNTO THE LORD IN VERSE 20 BY A NEW AND LIVING WAY WHICH HE HATH CONSECRATED FOR US THROUGH THE VEIL, THAT IS TO SAY HIS FLESH. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THAT VEIL THAT SEPARATED THE HOLY OF HOLIES FROM THE HOLY PLACE. AND IT SAYS, LET US DRAW NEAR WITH A TRUE HEART IN FULL ASSURANCE OF FAITH, HAVING OUR HEARTS SPRINKLED FROM AN EVIL CONSCIENCE AND OUR BODIES WASHED WITH PURE WATER. LET US HOLD FAST THE PROFESSION OF OUR FAITH WITHOUT WAVERING, FOR HE IS FAITHFUL THAT PROMISED. SO THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THAT NOW WE CAN ENTER RIGHT INTO THE VERY PRESENCE OF GOD. WHY? BECAUSE WE'VE DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT? NO, BECAUSE NOW WE HAVE A SAVIOR. IN THE OLD COVENANT, PEOPLE DID NOT HAVE A SAVIOR. THE ANIMAL SACRIFICES WERE TYPES AND SHADOWS OF THE SAVIOR WHO WOULD COME. BUT IT SAYS RIGHT HERE IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 9 THAT THE BLOOD OF ANIMALS BULLS AND GOATS COULD NEVER REALLY TAKE AWAY SINS. ALL IT WAS WAS SYMBOLIC. IT WAS JUST A PICTURE OF WHAT WOULD HAPPEN. SO IN THE OLD TESTAMENT, PEOPLE DIDN'T HAVE A SAVIOR. AND BECAUSE OF IT, GOD DEALT WITH PEOPLE KIND OF LIKE AT ARM'S LENGTH. THEY COULDN'T ENTER INTO HIS VERY PRESENCE BECAUSE THEIR SINS HAD NOT BEEN PURGED. AND AGAIN, THE ANIMAL SACRIFICES, THEY COVERED SINS, BUT THEY DIDN'T PURGE SINS. IN THE NEW COVENANT, IT'S LIKE LIGHT AND DARK DIFFERENCE WHAT WE HAVE. OUR SINS HAVE NOT ONLY BEEN IN PRINCIPLE OR IN SYMBOLISM ATONED FOR. JESUS HAS TOTALLY FORGIVEN AND CLEANSED ANY PERSON WHO WILL RECEIVE HIM AS THEIR PERSONAL SAVIOR. IF YOU PUT FAITH IN HIM, YOU BECOME A BRAND NEW CREATION, 2 CORINTHIANS 5, 17. ONE TRANSLATION SAYS A NEW SPECIES OF BEING THAT NEVER EXISTED BEFORE. YOU AREN'T JUST CHANGED IN PRINCIPLE. IT'S NOT LIKE JUST IN HEAVEN THAT YOUR NAME IS WRITTEN DOWN IN A BOOK. YOU ARE CHANGED ON THE INSIDE. YOU BECOME A BRAND NEW PERSON. AND GOD IS A SPIRIT, JOHN 4, 24. AND IF WE COME BEFORE HIM IN OUR BORN AGAIN SPIRIT, WE HAVE ACCESS TO HIM WITHOUT ANY BLOCKAGE, NO VEIL SEPARATING US, NO CHERUBIMS THERE THAT ARE GOING TO STOP US OR STRIKE US DEAD IF WE'VE GOT SOMETHING WRONG IN OUR LIFE. NO, WE'VE BEEN FORGIVEN AND PURGED OF ALL SINS, PAST, PRESENT, AND EVEN FUTURE SINS. THIS IS THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD. THIS IS WHAT GOD WANTED TO DO ALL ALONG, BUT IT WASN'T BECAUSE HE CHANGED, IT'S BECAUSE WE CHANGED. IN THE OLD COVENANT, NOBODY COULD BE BORN AGAIN. THEY COULD HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD BY LOOKING FORWARD TO WHAT JESUS WAS GOING TO DO AND OFFERING SACRIFICES AND THINGS LIKE THAT. BUT they, THEY COULD NOT HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD LIKE WHAT WE DO. WE ARE NOW CHANGED LOOKING BACK TO WHAT JESUS DID, NOT FORWARD, AND WE CAN NOW HAVE A RELATIONSHIP THAT THEY, they NEVER UNDERSTOOD. MATTER OF FACT, IN 2 PETER CHAPTER 1, IT SAYS THAT THE OLD TESTAMENT SAYS SEARCHED DILIGENTLY, ASKING GOD WHAT, what IT WAS GOING TO BE LIKE. YOU FIND THAT DAVID IN PSALMS CHAPTER 32, HE PROPHESIED AND HE SAYS, BLESSED IS THE MAN TO WHOM THE LORD WILL NOT IMPUTE SIN. HE DIDN'T SAY WHO DOES NOT, BUT HE SAYS WILL NOT. MAN, THAT NEEDS SOME EXPLANATION. MOST CHRISTIANS STILL DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT. THEY THINK THAT EVERY TIME THEY SIN, IT'S A BRAND NEW TRANSGRESSION BETWEEN THEM AND GOD, AND THEY GOT TO GO TO GOD AND GET THAT SIN UNDER THE BLOOD, OR GOD WON'T BLESS THEM, WON'T FELLOWSHIP WITH THEM. MAN, DAVID WAS SAYING THAT THERE WAS COMING A DAY WHEN SIN WOULD JUST BE TAKEN OUT OF THE WAY, AND IT WOULDN'T EVEN BE A FACTOR BETWEEN YOU AND GOD. I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS WHO THINK I'M A HERETIC, 
for saying these kind of things because, again, you still have that Old Testament law mentality that every sin has to be dealt with individually. And every time you sin, it's a new transgression between you and God. And if you don't get that sin forgiven and under the blood, God's not going to fellowship with you. There's two interpretations of this. The, the ultra-Pentecostals who really are legalistic about it, they will say that every time you sin, you lose your salvation. And if you were to, like, have a car wreck before you get that sin confessed, then you'd die and go to hell. Even though you might have been born again for 40 or 50 years, you've been serving God, you could be the pastor of the church. It doesn't matter. If you have an unconfessed sin in your life, you backslide, you lose your salvation, and you have to be born again again. Man, that is terrible. That is a terrible doctrine. If you believe that there is no such thing as real growth in your Christian life because you're going to constantly sin. You're going to constantly make mistakes. And every time you do, you will think you get reset back to zero that you've lost and you got to be born again again. You're never going to progress very far in your relationship with God. A lesser consequence, but the same principle, is what most evangelicals believe, that no, you don't lose your salvation every time you sin, but you lose your fellowship, you lose the blessing of God. God's not going to answer your prayer if you have any sin in your life. That's the same principle. It's just with a lesser consequence. And that is not what the Word of God teaches. God has dealt with your sin, all of your sin. If you believe that if you got an unconfessed sin in your life, you either lose your salvation or you lose all of the benefits of your salvation, if you really believe that, if that's the way that it really was, then the moment you get born again, I'd just kill you. I might go to hell, but that's the only way you would ever get to heaven because I can guarantee you every one of us constantly is failing in some area. Sin is not only when you transgress the law. That is sin. BUT SIN IS ALSO WHEN YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE DOING GOOD THAT YOU AREN'T DOING. JAMES 4, 17 SAYS, TO HIM THAT KNOWS TO DO GOOD AND DOES IT NOT, TO HIM IT IS SIN. ROMANS 14, 23 SAYS, WHATSOEVER IS NOT A FAITH IS SIN. BUT IF YOU USE THE BIBLE DEFINITION, YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE DOING GOOD. DID YOU KNOW, HUSBANDS, YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO LOVE YOUR WIFE THE WAY THAT CHRIST LOVES THE CHURCH. EVEN THOUGH YOU MAY BE DOING IT BETTER THAN YOU'VE EVER DONE, I DON'T BELIEVE THAT ANY OF US HAVE EVER LOVED OUR WIFE TO THE DEGREE THAT CHRIST LOVED THE CHURCH. AND WOMEN, IT SAYS THAT YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO REVERENCE YOUR HUSBAND. SOME OF YOU MAY REVERENCE YOUR HUSBAND TO A DEGREE, BUT DO YOU REVERENCE YOUR HUSBAND THE WAY THAT THE CHURCH IS SUPPOSED TO REVERENCE CHRIST? I THINK THAT EVERY ONE OF US FAIL. WE FAIL TO BE THE PARENT THAT WE'RE SUPPOSED TO BE. WE FAIL TO PRAY AS MUCH. WE FAIL TO GIVE AS MUCH. WE FAIL TO DO EVERYTHING. IF YOU ARE GOING TO SIT HERE AND SAY THAT IF YOU'VE GOT ANY UNCONFESSED SIN IN YOUR LIFE, THEN I MIGHT AS WELL JUST KILL YOU THE MOMENT YOU GET BORN AGAIN BECAUSE THAT'S THE ONLY WAY THAT YOU'D EVER BE ABLE TO MAINTAIN YOUR SALVATION OR TO EVER RECEIVE ALL OF THE BENEFITS OF YOUR SALVATION BECAUSE YOU JUST CONSTANTLY FAIL. AND SOMETIMES WE DON'T EVEN RECOGNIZE THAT WE FAIL. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU RIGHT NOW THAT BECAUSE OF YOUR RELIGIOUS TRADITION, YOU ARE MAD AT ME. AND YOU'RE THINKING THINGS ABOUT ME THAT'S SIN. WHETHER YOU BELIEVE IT OR NOT, I AM BORN AGAIN. I AM YOUR BROTHER IN THE LORD. I'M LIABLE TO HAVE MY HOUSE, MY MANSION, RIGHT NEXT TO YOURS IN ETERNITY. WHETHER YOU LIKE ME OR NOT, I AM A BELIEVER, AND THE THINGS YOU'RE THINKING ABOUT ME ARE SIN. MAN, I HOPE YOU UNDERSTAND WHAT I'M SAYING. NOBODY COULD EVER EVER APPROACH INTO THE HOLY OF HOLIES UNDER THE OLD COVENANT LAW, BUT UNDER THE NEW COVENANT GRACE, JESUS BECAME SIN, AND THROUGH HIS BODY, HE LITERALLY SUFFERED DEATH, AND THAT VEIL HAS BEEN RENT IN TWO. AND WE CAN'T TALK ABOUT THE CHERUBIMS ANYMORE BECAUSE THEY ARE NOT THERE. IF A CHERUBIM WAS TO TRY AND BLOCK YOUR WAY, YOUR ENTRANCE UNTO GOD, YOU COULD REBUKE HIM IN THE NAME OF JESUS BECAUSE YOU HAVE BEEN PURGED AND NO CHERUBIM, NO ANGEL HAS ANY RIGHT TO STOP YOU FROM HAVING ACCESS TO GOD IF YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN BY THE BLOOD OF THE LAMB. MAN, THAT'S GOOD NEWS. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT ARE STILL WALKING WITH THE ROPE AROUND YOUR ANKLE, AFRAID THAT IF YOU APPROACH GOD AND IF YOU HAVEN'T DONE EVERYTHING JUST RIGHT, HE'S GOING TO STRIKE YOU DEAD. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT ARE STILL JUST 
IT'S NOT THAT YOU DOUBT GOD THAT HE HAS THE ABILITY. YOU DOUBT HIS WILLINGNESS TO USE HIS ABILITY ON YOUR BEHALF BECAUSE YOU'RE SIN CONSCIOUS AND YOU'RE APPROACHING GOD UNDER THE OLD COVENANT LAW INSTEAD OF THE NEW COVENANT GRACE. LET ME JUST SAY THIS. I, I HATE TO HAVE TO EVEN, uh, YOU KNOW, GET OFF TRACK TO EXPLAIN THIS, BUT PEOPLE WILL MISUNDERSTAND IF I DON'T SAY IT. I AM NOT SAYING THAT IT'S OKAY FOR YOU JUST TO GO LIVE IN SIN. FIRST OF ALL, IF YOU'RE TRULY BORN AGAIN, GOD CHANGES YOUR HEART. AND IT SAYS IN 1 JOHN chapter 3, VERSE 3, THAT EVERY MAN THAT HAS THIS HOPE IN HIM PURIFIES HIMSELF EVEN AS HE IS PURE. IF YOU ARE TRULY BORN AGAIN, YOU AREN'T LOOKING FOR AN EXCUSE TO GO LIVE IN SIN. YOU ARE LOOKING FOR VICTORY OVER THAT SIN. SO IF YOU'RE TRULY BORN AGAIN, MAN, YOU DON'T WANT TO GO LIVE IN SIN. AND WHAT I'M SAYING WILL NOT SET YOU FREE TO SIN, BUT IT WILL SET YOU FREE FROM THE GUILT AND THE PENALTY ATTACHED TO THAT SIN, AND YOU WILL WIND UP SERVING GOD MORE ACCIDENTALLY THAN YOU EVER HAVE ON PURPOSE WHEN YOU ARE UNDER LAW. LOVE IS A STRONGER MOTIVATION THAN FEAR. AND YET, BY AND LARGE, THE CHURCH TODAY IS TRYING TO MOTIVATE PEOPLE TO HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THROUGH FEAR OF PUNISHMENT IF THEY DON'T DO EVERYTHING RIGHT, INSTEAD OF TELLING THEM ABOUT HOW GOOD GOD IS AND LETTING THE LOVE OF GOD, THE GOODNESS OF GOD, LEAD MEN TO REPENTANCE. MAN, I'VE SAID A BUNCH RIGHT THERE. I AM NOT ENCOURAGING SIN. YOU KNOW, LET ME JUST SAY THAT I PRAISE GOD THAT HE CHOSE ME TO PREACH THIS MESSAGE OF THE GRACE OF GOD. I PRAISE HIM FOR MULTIPLE REASONS, BUT ONE OF THEM IS THAT WHEN YOU PREACH GRACE AND YOU TALK ABOUT THE NEW COVENANT, THE LEGALIST WILL ALWAYS COME OUT AND SAY, WELL, YOU'RE PREACHING THIS JUST SO THAT YOU CAN GO LIVE IN SIN. YOU CAN'T SAY THAT ABOUT ME. I'VE LIVED A HOLIER LIFE THAN MOST OF MY CRITICS. YOU KNOW, I'M NOW 73 YEARS OLD. I'VE NEVER SAID A WORD OF PROFANITY. I'VE NEVER TAKEN A DRINK OF LIQUOR. I'VE NEVER SMOKED A CIGARETTE. I HAVE LIVED A SEPARATED, HOLY LIFE. I AM NOT PREACHING GRACE TO EXCUSE SINFUL BEHAVIOR IN MY LIFE. AND SO YOU JUST CAN'T ACCUSE ME OF THAT. AND I AM A TESTIMONY OF WHAT I'M PREACHING, THAT THE GOODNESS OF GOD LEADS US TO REPENTANCE. AS IT SAYS OVER IN TITUS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 12, THAT HIS GRACE TEACHES US TO DENY UNGODLINESS AND WORLDLY LUST. GOD'S GRACE HAS CAUSED ME TO LIVE A HOLY LIFE AS A BYPRODUCT, NOT A ROOT OF MY RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. BOY, THAT'S HUGE. SO IF ANYBODY'S BEEN LISTENING TODAY AND THINK, WELL, YOU'RE JUST SAYING THAT I CAN GO LIVE IN SIN. WELL, GOD LOVES YOU. HIS GRACE IS THE SAME WHETHER YOU LIVE IN SIN OR WHETHER YOU LIVE HOLY. BUT BOY, IF YOU LIVE IN SIN, YOU ARE JUST GIVING SATAN A DIRECT INROAD INTO YOUR LIFE. AND IF YOU DO THAT, HE WILL EAT YOUR LUNCH AND POP THE BAG. YOU DON'T WANT TO DO THAT. ON MARCH 23, 1968, ANDREW WOMACK RECEIVED A DRAMATIC REVELATION FROM THE LORD. SINCE THEN, ANDREW'S MINISTRY HAS GROWN TO REACHING OVER 5 BILLION PEOPLE WORLDWIDE THROUGH HIS DAILY TELEVISION BROADCASTS. AS WE CONTINUE TO EXPAND ANDREW'S VISION THROUGH TELEVISION, OUR PARTNERS HAVE ENABLED US TO PRODUCE THE GOSPEL TRUTH PROGRAM IN SPANISH. We're reaching new Spanish-speaking audiences with the message of God's unconditional love and grace. Andrew Womack Ministries is not only reaching the world through television, but also through Karis Bible College. Andrew has Karis Bible College locations in multiple countries around the world. Our international Karis locations are discipling students with the life-changing Word of God in their own language. Andrew's teachings have been translated into 32 different languages. Andrew Womack Ministries is committed to seeing that every country, culture, and tongue come to know the saving power of Jesus Christ. If you aren't already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner by visiting our website at awmi.net. While you're there, you can learn more about all the things God is doing through this ministry. Become a partner with us today and help share the gospel around the world. Gatherings like this are important, where we get together and you begin to start encouraging others, and hopefully it's going to encourage you too. You've got to realize that the truth through your voice is essential 
in this hour. We need to be preparing for a harvest and building healthy churches. Listen, you have to understand this. We need the Holy Spirit to minister. Everything that God has spoken to our hearts, let's stay steadfast to that because I'll tell you guys, in the end, it's gonna all be worth it. I believe some of you are gonna leave here totally transformed. Andrew is offering his booklet, The True Nature of God, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. I would like to encourage you to please get this material on the true nature of God. I have books in English and in Spanish, and then I have CDs and DVDs. And I tell you, this is foundational stuff. It's like if you're building a house, if your foundation is no good, the house is not going to last. This is foundational, and I promise you, it would really, really help you. So please request the material on the true nature of God. It's a keeper. It'll change your life. Andrew's complete series, The True Nature of God, is available in a CD or DVD album and as a book in either English or Spanish. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Before you were even formed in your mother's womb, God already had determined a purpose for your life, a God-given purpose. God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do, and I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis! The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life. If you sit under the Word for four hours a day, for five days a week, for two or three years, I guarantee you, you are going to have God speak to you and start revealing purpose to you. Every one of you were created for a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is?